Hi folks, and welcome to Magic the Gathering Arena. Well, if you didn't know, it is the online, the main online, one of two to be precise, but the main online version of Magic the Gathering, the trading card game. This is arguably, or rather not so much, uh, the best version you could play digitally uh, when compared to Magic the Gathering Online that has probably a more accurate uh, rendition of the actual physical game in a digital format but is a bit clunkier and more old-fashioned whereas this uh, version is animated, has sound effects and uh, special uh, effects and whatnot that really bring the game to life, though, as we are going to see uh, right here, it has a rather limited uh, roster of game uh, formats when compared to, you know, all the different uh, ways we can play Paper and Magic the Gathering Online. So we're going to try to go through exactly what you'll need to know once you first install the client, uh, what you can do in here and what you cannot do. We'll at some point make a comparison video to Magic the Gathering Online, but seeing as this is pretty much where uh, Wizards of the Coast is pushing Magic the Gathering as far as digital goes, uh, it should, uh, for the most part, when it comes to playing see most of your game time. So, where do things start? Well, when you first install the game, you'll have a tutorial uh, to complete, and one of the uh, aspects of that tutorial is essentially trying to figure out how different colors work, in broad terms, and how different decks work. Uh, so there is a section dedicated to playing specific archetypes of decks and strategies for each color and if you complete them I seek a path to peace yes 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 I know so if you complete them as you can see you get rewards along the way and to top things off an entire deck this is the best way of getting at least a uh, starting set of cards because if you complete all of these, Why you'll get... Why the I like? People? Not so much. Yeah, a bunch of decks. One for each color. And while you're doing that, you'll also be completing quests. How does that work? Well, you've got daily quests. These come about one a day, as the, day, uh, the name implies. Uh, you can have three queued up at any given time, meaning that if you don't play the game for three days, they'll just accumulate, and you can go uh, complete game uh, quests uh, uh, one after the other uh, in one single uh, game session. The dailies, meaning rewards you get for a specific day and these do not accumulate so you either do them that day or not the weekly quests uh, that reset every Sunday you would guessed I am recording this on a Saturday uh, and these can be completed uh, during that week again they do not accumulate and then you have the mastery ramp where you can uh, track your progress towards a uh, and blocking all sorts of things for a specific set. How does this all go? So, daily quests usually uh, indicate something like play 25 creatures, uh, kill 20 enemy creatures, play 30 white or blue spells, and so on. And that gives you some gold award, which is one of these two in-game currencies, gold being the less valuable currency, gems being the cash convertible currency that can uh, purchase anything. Gold can't purchase anything, only certain things. 
Uh, so gems is essentially the microtransaction uh, heaven uh, currency that uh, Wizards of the Coast is looking to uh, push, for the most part, uh, people to buy so they can, uh, you know, progress quicker, get better cards, participate in uh, more exciting events, and so on. You can completely, that's what I do, play free-to-play. Because Wizards of the Coast gets my money and the physical side of the game, so I'm not really too keen on, you know, letting them double dip and having me pay for the same cards twice. So, yeah. So, how do you make use of gold? How do you get it? So, you can get gold and XP, XP towards the mastery uh, track. We're going to look at that just a bit. You can get gold for quests, dailies as well, gold and uh, XP. You can also get cards and uh, these rewards. You often get uh, gold and a card or XP and a card, gold or XP, uh, and so on. The first four games uh, you win every day is represents about two-thirds of the rewards for all these dailies. So if you do four of the games and you win all four, uh, the other 11 will net you just a tiny bit more Golden Mastery XP, but not enough to justify if you're not really into the games you're playing in the, that particular day or the format uh, you're playing that day. So I really usually don't push it too hard on that. If you're completing the first four wins, you're getting the bulk of your rewards anyway. Dailies again, you can uh, accumulate these. You don't have to play every game. Dailies are... A eh, nice boost, but uh, not all that important. You get a few hundred gold a day, like three or four hundred at most. Uh, the quests give you a lot more than that, like uh, 500. Or if you reset it, you have a button to reset it once a day, uh, 750. That's random, so you always try to reset the 500 quests to get a 750, just for the sake of efficiency. The weeklies are more generous than that, but you complete them rather quickly, one or two game sessions, because, yeah, they're available for the entire week, and they also only include uh, around 15 objectives, usually, or match wins or something, not more than that. And again, here you get gold, XP, and cards. No gems whatsoever for any of these. You then move into the mastery reward track, that is a somewhat overcomplicated, <laughs> some might say, but for a reason. Uh, the overcomplication being that uh, you're looking at an upper track that is completely free. And as you can see, every even level you get something. And some of the odd levels, but not all, uh, you get uh, a treat. And when I mean something, it's a pack, so a booster pack of cards. But when you look at the lower track, that is all good and fine and dandy on the upper track, but on the lower track, oh boy. That's where things get interesting. You get card styles, packs, orbs, and uh, lots of gold, gems, event tokens that allow you to participate in particular events for free using the token instead of having to pay in. Packs for different sets, you get a lot of stuff. Even uh, companions, like little pets and uh, whatnot. Mythic cards that you can uh, use to unlock uh, specific cards. Uh, we'll go uh, through that in a bit. And as you can see, the rewards for the free track end at level 54. The rewards for the uh, mastery unlock just keep going. And that's where they're banking on people to spend their money in. Buying gems, because that is the only way you can unlock Mastery Pass. However, there are ways to earn gems in-game for free. So if you buy the Mastery Pass, as you can see, you can essentially get gems back. And there's 11 days now till this finishes. Uh, I'm on course to be able to accumulate enough gems just using... Uh, our options, you know, completing uh, drafts, draft events uh, to gain gems. We'll see uh, how that goes in a bit. 
And if you get to at least level 45, you get 1200 gems back just from uh, playing the game. So essentially you get a third of what you put into the Mastery Pass and gems back just from playing every now and again. Uh, well, a certain degree of regularity because otherwise you won't accumulate enough levels to get here to here. But I play maybe... I've started actually playing only a few weeks ago and I've played, what, every other day for an hour or two at most? Sometimes not even that and I'm up to level 37 and pretty much sure to be able to get enough gems to unlock the Mastery Pass and get the 1200 gems back from that. Probably not anywhere near to the top there, but yeah, I only got into mid-cycle, uh, Baldur's Gate Mastery Cycle, so yeah, I'll only get to about two-thirds of the way there. So, that is the first and most important use of gems you need to think about when getting into Magic Gathering Arena. That will allow you to get most cards and most rewards. So essentially most bang for your buck even though you're not spending any bucks, ideally. And that's where we're going to go next. How to make use of your gold that you get for your dailies and whatnot and transform those into gems. And this is where you go into the events section here. As you can see, there's all different formats uh, for different events here. Although the ones we're specifically looking at are ones that you can pay into with gold and reserve rewards in gems. So what I've played, not much, but I've played some and had pretty good results, was standard events. As you can see, you just keep playing with your standard deck until you lose three matches. So there's a bit of variance in that, but uh, I got to... Uh, was it four wins? Five wins? I don't remember it exactly. I played one to see how, how things went. And with my pretty basic deck, uh, well, I'm not terrible, so there's that. But if you're slightly above average, uh, you should be able to get at least the same amount of wins as losses. So three to three or four to three or thereabouts. And you can get two, three, four, four fifty, even five hundred gems, three packs, and a play in point that's for the uh, monthly qualifier. Uh, that, as you can see, for twelve hundred, twelve, uh, no, not twelve hundred, twenty five hundred. <laughs> sorry, twenty five hundred gold. You can get a conversion of five to one, essentially, if you're really good. Uh, closer to 10 to 1 if you're not so good in terms of gold to gems just by playing the game having fun so if uh, you're making you you'll be making around that on a daily quest and whatnot around a thousand to a thousand five hundred or thereabouts I think it's 1300 the maximum you can get or something so around to a thousand a day if every week you play two of these you'll be making maybe a thousand uh, gems a week or something. So you can easily get to, or fairly easily get to uh, the required amount for the mastery pass. If you're terrible at this, however, uh, unless you get to the break even point, rewards are pretty slim. So yeah, less than half. This is not really the best uh, way to get there. You could always go for a slightly more risky traditional standard. Five matches total, no matter how many you lose, but you get out, but you can still uh, move forward if you win more than you lose, by one at least. If not, it's not as good as the tr standard event, the traditional standard. Um, it is slightly riskier in this uh, regard, but again, 600 gems, if you get to the third one or the fourth one, it's double the cost of entry. You could potentially get more than double the uh, earnings. 
I think it's a safer bet because of variants and because of the larger pool of games you'll be playing. Because if you're even, you'll have played six matches, so variance will be lesser in that case. Yeah, statistically speaking, than five matches. Uh, and the reward for breaking even is essentially the same. Two to three hundred on average if you're uh, about breaking even. As opposed to 150 to 600. It really is a matter of how often you'll fall on the... Uh, more wins than losses side of things compared to the under 50% uh, mark. But even if you uh, fall on this side of things, 600 is uh, not exactly as good as uh, getting to the 2 or 300 for half the price if you do it more often. So it's really a matter of seeing, trying both out and seeing uh, where your deck uh, falls on either of these uh, event types. Or, if you prefer and you're skilled at uh, deck building, something I have never done and will be doing for a uh, up and coming video, I, I think. It would be interesting. Uh, first draft experience uh, <laughs> ever. You can play a draft game. Draft games, you essentially pick cards uh, from rotating packs with other players in a pod. Uh, so one player picks one card, the pack moves uh, to the left, and another player picks another card, and so on. And then the packs rotate the other way around to the right player, and uh, you just keep picking cards out of the packs until they're, well, all picked out. Uh, and then you play those cards. And you keep those cards, that's important. Uh, so that's a, an easy way to also start building your collection. Playing drafts, you keep the cards you draft, which is not the case with a standard event. You're not gaining any cards. You're essentially just playing the decks you already have. Uh, in this case, you're playing, uh, well, uh, new cards. You're also paying in a lot more. 10,000 gold is about uh, what you'll make in a week and a half. So you won't be playing these quite as often if you are not uh, net positive on the earnings front here. So you want to at least, again, break even. Uh, if you don't do that, you're probably not reaching a good enough conversion rate that you're making enough to cover your input. But again, your dailies, weeklies will uh, always uh, keep you uh, afloat in terms of uh, gold income on a regular basis. So if you play this, you'll get 40 cards that you draft. That's a nice addition to your collection. And if you break even or just do better than that. You'll get three, two, three, maybe four packs and a whole bunch of gems on top of that. If you win, that's two thirds of the way to the mastery pass. One single uh, draft uh, event. This, however, means that you'll have to be good at deck building. And that's where we're going next. If you hadn't noticed, uh, these quests, dailies and weeklies, are really focused on winning games. Meaning that the, let's say, the not necessarily the easiest, but at least the most efficient time-wise in terms of initial enjoyment you'll get from the game, I guess, because it's really the easiest type of deck to build. You want to build a simple, aggressive deck that won't have many rares or mythic cards because let's face it you won't have many mythic or rare cards to begin with uh, so you want to build a simple aggressive early start type deck so that you can uh, win games in a quick succession an aggressive deck typically will peter out once you empty your hand and if you start not having good draws, you're mostly reliant on uh, draws because those decks typically don't typically don't have much scrying or uh, you know looking at library and drawing car extra cards and whatnot. So if you don't really uh, manage to one-two punch uh, the opponent in the first five to six turns, uh, that's where 
the uh, very aggressive uh, deck types tend to uh, start uh, really uh, not doing too well uh, for uh, long games. But that's what you're looking for. You're looking to go through at least four wins a day. If you do that with a very aggressive deck, you can do that in like 30 minutes top. Uh, and same for weeklies, meaning that uh, you can play around building other decks, uh, but at least for the first couple of games, yeah, get them uh, over quickly and lose a two, win two if it's not a particularly effective deck. And uh, I mean, you'll get it done in a jiffy. Get your points, get your gold, get your experience, accumulate towards your drafts and standards, and start building better decks. So, let's look at my deck list. Uh, most of these are decks that essentially the game gives you, uh, just through the tutorials and the initial game events. Ah uh, yes, uh, one particular type of event I almost forgot to mention. Uh, the jump in. When you uh, start the game, you're given a number of jump in tokens. And these also allow you to select two different half decks and combine them and then uh, play a few matches in Alchemy, which is a format for the online uh, version of the game. And you also keep these cards. So by completing the uh, color challenges and these jump in events, you'll get a whole bunch of cards. Commons, uncommons, a few rares, but nothing spectacular there. But more than enough to start your deck building. So, we go to our deck building. Uh, as I said, most of these, in fact, almost all of these, these are all decks I won in the initial uh, round of events and uh, tutorials. So, are most of these. Uh, but then I started building my own decks. Uh, some not so good, some uh, that kind of work. <laughs> so let's go for my very first deck uh, that started evolving and that slowly turned into that one over there that I play in standard. And that I play in standard uh, in ranked. You want to get to that level, at least, uh, for a good reason, and I'll show you exactly why. Uh, because whenever the season ends, meaning when uh, a set rotation uh, is about to end, uh, you want to have uh, earned rank tiers at least far enough to get to gold. And you're pretty much ensured to get to gold, even if you're not particularly good, if your decks are uh, simple and uh, not particularly effective, You'll be able to make uh, grind away uh, just by regularly playing, not necessarily trying to grind levels, but just through natural uh, play over the course of uh, three months, usually seasons uh, last, to get to gold. Because if you get to that level, well, you'll get packs gold and a special uh, treatment, so uh, a style card gifted to you for doing essentially nothing. Other than that, if you're drafting, which I haven't, because I, I never done it before, I don't know how to. I've uh, looked at a few videos. You can do the same and replicate the same rewards in limited play, that is in drafts. And if you're really good, well, you can get up the levels, but uh, don't count on it. <laughs> Getting to Mythic will require a lot of hours and effort, and pretty good decks. So when you're starting off. Uh, try to get gold. Once you get to gold, if you don't feel confident, stop playing uh, ranked uh, matches and uh, just uh, do dailies and uh, other game formats. So, the packs, you'll get quite a few accumulated. We'll see that uh, in a bit. Uh, and this is where you can uh, crack them to gain cards to make your decks. To make the decks, and we're going to look at my first deck. Let's double click on that. You want, well, at least ideally, uh, as I said, make a simple, effective deck that has a very quick uh, trigger uh, to the, the game. Uh, so you want to hit hard and hit fast 
even if it's not the most sophisticated deck, uh, starting simple is usually the best way to snowball into uh, something that works. In this case, uh, I uh, started dabbling with the classic uh, aggressive red deck. In standard, uh, I mean this is an alchemy deck, because a few cards are not allowed in standard, but uh, I started off with Ah, what can I play? Let's start with the base of the mana curve here. So cards that only cost one mana. What do I have in my library of cards that costs one mana and can hit and has some sort of uh, interaction with other of my creatures or potentially uh, with creature types? I used the rabbit battery. It's a creature. It has haste. It's one mana. It's going to be equipped on other creatures for plus one plus one. And it's an artifact. Meaning that it has three things going for it. It's cheap. It hits the first time it gets out. You can uh, protect it or protect other creatures by equipping it to something else. And it's an artifact. We'll see uh, how important that is a bit later on. When uh, looking at the first standard deck I, I built. And again, I'm not a specialist. This is what I did. Just giving you an idea of how to build a deck, essentially. So start off simple. Start playing with what one mana cards, what two mana cards you have in the library to, to play. So you have red and uh, colorless selected here. So we can uh, clearly see what options are there available to us in our collection. And these types of cards. My collection is tiny, uh, so not much quality to be had. Uh, you can... Uh, you have to build it with what you've got. Uh, so I had some rabbits. One manas. I had some Kumano faces Kakazan. One manas. One damage. Second turn. Get a plus one plus one counter on it. On something you uh, cost. Then it becomes a 2-2 two -two creature. So it's a constant ramp. It's what I'm looking for in a quick hard hitting uh, red uh, aggressive deck. Something that keeps the ball rolling no matter what. So if you've got a couple of these out, you can uh, time it to get a creature out. Imagine on turn one, you play a rabbit battery. On turn two, you have these two of these in the hand. You play two of these, you deal two damage. Turn three, you got three mana. You can drop a, uh, a three mana creature, for instance. I've got Ambergris on my deck. And this becomes a five, four which is already quite a big creature to have on uh, turn 3, plus with all the good stuff uh, this uh, lady uh, brings to the table. And you can see what I'm talking about. It's a, a deck that uh, if you get the right cards in the right order and you've got enough mana, uh, by turn 3 uh, the enemy would... Uh, the opponent could be down to 10 life. And if you don't cast that and you draw, let's say instead of Ambergris and uh, the uh, the Kumanos, you uh, draw a Festival Crasher. Well, this uh, little fella gets a plus two, plus zero for each um, instant or sorcery you cost. In fact, uh, oh, I thought it was plus three, plus zero. Did they change that? Oh, maybe they changed that. In any case, plus two, plus zero, for every instant or sorcery, you combine this with uh, Run Amok, for instance. So plus three, plus three. The guts plus two, that's a plus five, plus three. With Trample. Imagine you have two of these on the on the deck, uh, on the table, or you run two Run Amok, and you've got a pretty big creature for two mana. Again, ramping. Interactions. You want things that work well with each other. You cast this, you get a rabbit on it, it gets haste. You uh, cast a run amok. If uh, someone blocks you, you get trample, plus the two. You're hitting them hard. Hard to avoid, hard uh, damage that uh, is not so easy to resist. You get creature removal and uh, damage, direct damage. Uh, you get a few of uh, cheap damage like this. One mana, you cast two of these. The Festival Crusher, again, gets two bonuses. 
So, yeah. Not the best of decks. But, uh, let me show you uh, how things have been working out, in fact. If we look at... And I'm bringing this over. Oop, let's go. If we look at the stats for the deck... Let's see. Uh, I'm checking. Yeah, it's on. I've played 30 matches with this deck. Exactly. I've won 21 matches with it. That's a 70% win rate. Granted, most of the opponents aren't exactly pros. Uh, but a 70% win rate with a super easy, cheap deck like this is, I mean, pretty good. Uh... Pretty good to rack up those wins and daily uh, rewards. Some uh, draw card options here if your creature dies. Some direct damage big drops like Red Dragon and a finisher like uh, Inescapable Blaze that cannot be countered. That's pretty good against blue uh, counter spells. It's uh, got an answer for simple to moderately complex uh, uh, decks. If it's a, a life gain deck, if it's a super aggressive uh, token creation deck, or a, a very effective control deck, I'm screwed. Let's be frank. But <laughs> it works for its, the, its uh, purposes. It works uh, fine. This deck then had to be transformed to work in standard. So let's take a look at that. Because there's quite a few cards that this first deck used that I wasn't aware couldn't be used in standard. So I started taking a few cards out, bringing another few cards in, because in standard, uh, yeah, a few of the big boys on the other deck cannot uh, be part of the deck. So you replace uh, some of the two drops and three drops with uh, and four drops with maybe a sniper uh, instead of inescapable... Uh, you maybe you want a Voltage Surge or a Kami's Flare instead. Uh, and once you got those guys in, I realized, uh, well, maybe my Nest Rubbers don't have enough synergy with my Battery Rabbits. Uh, so maybe we'll get another quick 2-2 uh, Haste creature. We, I had a few Ronins, so I put these in and then I realized, well, these are all artifacts. Is there a card I could use that has artifact? Oh yeah, the Patchwork Automaton. This guy gets a counter. So yeah, if I have one of these and then uh, two Reinforced Ronins, they play in, they play out of my hand each turn. Each time I play one of these, this guy gets plus one, plus one. If I put Lizard Blades on it, it get Double Strike. And again, things can quickly get out of hand for the opponent if they don't cut down our aggression early. The base of this deck is pretty much the same, so the Rabbits, the Kumanu, the... Uh, well, I have these instead of the um, Nest Robbers, because the Nest Robbers, let's face it, are not very good. 2-1, two, uh, 2 mana. Uh, with Haste, uh, I replaced more expensive spells with Voltage Surge, because this is a uh, bit uh, leaner on mana sources. Uh, I removed the Festival Crashers and tried to lean into the artifact aspect of things with uh, Getaway Cars. Because these also get... Uh, if you have a rabbit on the table and you get a Getaway Car, you can crew it with a rabbit, attack it, and the car, you can, you can read it here, has an option to return the creature that crewed it back to your hand. And the rabbit has haste. Even if it didn't, but uh, it's good for it to have haste if you want to use it other uh, in other um, situations uh, once it's back into your hand. That means that the next turn, this guy will get a plus one, plus one counter just from playing the uh, rabbit again. And if you have another Ronin and so on. So the Patrick Automatons are really the uh, engine to the, the deck. Actually, maybe I should rename the deck. Let's do that. Um, because the engine to the deck is just... Um, yeah, actually. 
yeah, it's just pumping the patchwork automaton, essentially. It's not exactly a one-trick pony deck, because even if we don't get the automaton, it uh, can uh, really ramp really quickly. Uh, but it has some downsides. I really wanted to have more lizard blades, uh, I think, because Simeon Sling and Dueling Rapier are not the best cards, uh, to be frank. And uh, if I could find a better replacement for Goldhound, I would as well, or Experimental or Synthesizer. Although this allows you to uh, draw cards uh, more quickly, uh, and that's pretty good. So, yeah. And this deck, uh, in standard, has about a 50% win rate uh, with me. I'm not very good at playing it. <laughs> Let's face it. Uh, and in uh, uh, ranked matches, which is all I'm using this for, you're essentially playing better players than uh, in open play. Uh, so a lower win percentage is to be expected. But yeah, for a second week deck with essentially no rare cards, almost none, uh, very simple cards to, to have. Most of these you will have just by completing the tutorial and um, the jump-in events. And yeah, plug in another creature, another spell, uh, try to find new interactions between cards. Uh, you don't have to build a red deck, just try to build a deck that suits your playstyle and that is effective at least in the first two to three turns. Try to have a mana curve that suits an aggressive style. Play simple, play fast, build from there. That's my advice. And that's uh, about it. Yeah, let's save. That's about it in terms of deck building. Once you have an efficient deck, you can then think about building your collection. That's where gaining packs uh, comes in. As you can see, I have quite a few, and why haven't I opened them? And let me tell you, it's not easy to resist opening these because look at them, they're just staring at you and they're bobbing about. Uh, they're just saying, open me, open me, I have superb, superb cards inside. Just crack me open and let's take a look. Uh, don't do that. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Because, uh, as I said, when playing the tutorials, you're earning a lot of cards. When you're playing drafts, you're earning a lot of cards. Cards that you earn during drafts are not copy protected. What I mean, what do I mean by that? Let's see. I have four etching of Kumano, or oh, Kumano faces Kazan. What happens if I choose one of the, these uh, in a draft? I'll get a fifth copy. Only you can't have a fifth copy. There's no point to it. So the game system essentially translates that into uh, progress towards a vault. Each time you earn a card that you already have, uh, you gain some percentage in the vault progress. This is where uh, you get wild cards. Well, you get wild cards in packs when you open them as well. Uh, but uh, this is a good way to earn some. Why do you want these? Well, because this is how you complete decks that you want to build. Say, uh, let's go to filter this and say not collected. Okay. And here are cards I don't have. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have this. Uh, let's go for just uh, commons so that I can, I can exemplify what I mean by this. Uh, if we go to common cards and I'll redeem one just for the heck of it. Uh, let's see. Target creature grains trample and gets plus x plus zero until end of turn. I don't have this card. I could want to add it to my deck. I don't have it in the collection though, so I'll have the option to craft it. If I craft it, I will consume a common wild card. And now it's in my collection. And there it is. That's how you craft the cards, specifically how you get the cards you don't have uh, when you need them for a specific deck. 
or a combination that you want to, to include in a, an already existing deck. But, yeah, if you're earning cards through drafts, when you're opening packs, you might get duplicates. The third, the fourth, and then fifth and sixth and so on copy. If you get a copy when opening a pack instead of a draft, that is copy protected. Uh, not sure if that's the correct term, but what does that mean? That means that if you open it and, for instance, there's a mythic card here that you already have in your collection four times, this mythic card will get converted directly into gems. And that is the hard currency proxy in the game. Uh, not a large amount, like 20, I think, or 25 or something. But that quickly racks up. So if you're drafting and uh, at the end of the season you might have dozens of packs and your collection is almost complete just through drafting and you open the packs, you'll make a lot of gems. A lot of gems. Sometimes enough for about half of the mastery pass or thereabouts, sometimes more. Uh, I've seen other players talk to me about it and uh, yeah, that checks out. It's a more efficient way of playing the game. Maybe not as exciting <laughs> because you'll mostly be opening packs uh, near the end of each season uh, instead of getting the cards in packs at the beginning of the season. But you'll build your collection much quicker and be able to get the mastery pass uh, earlier so you can go up the ramp here and get better rewards, which means also more packs. So it's really a snowball effect. A snowball effect. And this is really what you want to focus on. Getting the mastery pass to move up the mastery tree, get all these rewards for which you need all those mastery orbs, of which I don't have many because I only started mid-season and I still haven't unlocked the mastery pass. Uh, and all the good stuff in the bottom row here. So yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know, except for the store, which is uh, something you should stay away for, uh, from, from the most part, with the exception of maybe daily deals or bundles, where you can sometimes have a pretty good uh, hmm, cheap deal like this. For instance, you get an alternative uh, moving treatment and style uh, yeah, full art style for uh, the card you might use in your deck, and uh, you might come in here and uh, blow a bit of gold on it. Cool. Now when I play this card, it'll be uh, all uh, crisp and funky like this, instead of uh, static uh, and uh, not a full white art uh, style card. And that's some of the fun. Some of the fun. I'm not going to give you much advice in terms of what to buy or what not to buy in terms of bundles. These kind of change over time. For the most part, anything that you can purchase with gems only uh, tends to not be worth it. And things that you can buy with gold only are sometimes not necessarily worth it uh, unless it's something you need or want uh, specifically. Uh, I bought an avatar or two and some sleeves at some point, but it's really up to you. And that's pretty much everything there is to know to get started on Magic the Gathering Arena. Or at least uh, some of it. Uh, of course, I don't know much about it either. I've only started a few weeks ago. But that's uh, what I thought brought a bit of, um, you know, first-hand experience and recent experience into the onboarding part of uh, getting into Magic the Gathering Arena when uh, maybe you haven't played it before, you haven't played any Magic before at all. I had a paper version. Um, yeah, get a, a feel for what it's all about, what you can get out of it, which is essentially playing Magic online for free if you want. And being able to play and get most of the cards from most of the sets. Actually, uh, if we look at the packs, uh, where can we see? I think this, in the store we can see. If we go to the packs section of the store, yeah. You can see all of these sets 
that are part of the current standard uh, that go all the way back to Zendikar Rising uh, at this time, though up to Forgotten Realms they were rated out in the not so uh, far future. And then sets that are already out of standard. Back to Kaladesh. There is nothing prior to Kaladesh in Arena. If you want to play those online, you'll have to go to Magic the Gathering online. Or play the paper version, of course. Paper, you can play anything you want. Here, not so much. Formats are limited. Sets are limited. Though I know they are working on extending this further back. Not sure how uh, fast they're working on that or how hard they're working on that because they're really focusing on this side of things more than that side of things. But again, it's not like you can redeem the sets for a physical version or anything. <laughs> like the Magic Online uh, dealie. Here you're stuck with the digital version of the cards, so that's why I, I'm i not paying for them. If I can't have them, I'm not paying for them. I don't own them, why should I pay for them? That's my rationale. And still, what I play online is essentially what I afterwards tend to end up buying in physical form, so yeah, Wizards of the Coast are getting my money anyway, just not twice. And I should seriously uh, advise you to do the exact same. Don't have them double dip. If you want a card, don't buy the physical and an online version. Though some sets do have a, an online redemption code, so you do, when you buy the physical, you do get them on Arena. But those are really far and few uh, uh, of the available decks they uh, put out. Mostly arena starters or uh, pre-release packs, I guess. They now do that as well. But most sets don't. Don't have online redemption codes. So yeah. Play online. Play for free if you would like. You can pretty much do that. Pay if you'd like. But be aware, this is an online service only. You cannot convert these to physical in any way, shape or form. And that's it. We've uh, pretty much covered everything there is to cover about Magic the Gathering Arena onboarding for at least the first uh, few weeks or months uh, of your experience, if you get that far into it. Right, I hope you're looking forward to next videos. Like I said, I will be playing Draft for the first time. So if you're interested in finding out how that went, see you next time. Till then.